Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the shop. What are we working on today? We've got a whole medley of different things piled on the floor, but what we're focusing on today are these really nice, or soon to be really nice, battery cables. This is These are cables off of my Dodge second gen. They were uh, kind of shitty. Uh, some people said that, that it might be part of the issue that I'm having with my truck. Uh, they've, they've had a hard life. They've seen better days. They cranked the engine over just fine, but we're going to put some we're going to put some new cables on. So let me show you my process for doing this. This is the first step. Don't use battery cable. Battery cable is shit. It's stiff, and the strands in it are each individual strand is a lot thicker, and it doesn't conduct electricity quite as well as welding cable. I like this stuff, Temco Easy Flex. I just kind of happened to buy it when I was doing cables on my first gen Dodge, and I really liked it, so I bought some more for my second gen. There's also marine grade wire if you really want to spend a couple extra bucks but get some really high quality shit. Marine grade wire, all the conductors inside are pre tinned. So that's just, it makes it easier to solder. It's more, way more resistant to uh, corrosion, but I just went for regular welding wire. This is 3 aught. The factory size is 2 aught. So, is it excessive? Maybe, but, you know, it, an extra 50 cents a foot or whatever, who gives a shit? So, buy welding cable. And then we get to the ends. Now, depending on what you're doing, you either want a lug end or a clamp or whatever. Um, there are definitely different grades and qualities of, of ends. I have two different ends here that I've, that I've soldered on. This is the first kind. I mean, well, they're both lugs, you know, ring terminals. This is a, uh, oh, I can't even remember the name of the, of the manufacturer, but they're they're nice. They're solid copper. They're pre-tinned, and you know they're they're uh, th you know there's nothing wrong with them. This you can see the copper in here because I drilled this this out larger, so uh, disregard that. But take a look at this one. This I also drilled out. That's why it's coppery inside, not tinned. These are both for three aught wire. But take a look at the at the difference in size. You got more length to put your wire in. You got a slightly bigger face here, and the thickness. Look at the difference in thickness, and you could feel it too in the weight. Obviously, this one's a lot heavier, and I could be wrong. I have no idea, no way of telling, but the plating, the tinning on this, just seems a lot heavier. Also, the wire seems to fit a little bit better in this, and I also don't like the flare on the end there. Not a really big deal, but I don't like the flare. This is nice and straight. This is a marine grade battery terminal. I bought this from uh, Bay Marine Supply on eBay. And I don't know. I, unfortunately, I don't know the just the the make of this terminal. But anyway, be aware that there are shitty terminals and good terminals out there. This is really nice. The reason I put two different ends on this, I, I use the the Bay Marine here, and the other one, I think it's an AMCO, A-A-M-C-O, I, I believe. Uh, the reason I did that is because this end is going to be clamped or bolted onto a, a you know, the, the battery terminal. There's a bolt that goes through there. This is, I believe, a military-style battery clamp. So I wanted the the thinner material here, so I'm not stacking up half an inch of connectors on this. But the other end, this is a ground cable of course, because it's black, this is going to be mounted on the engine block, so I wanted an extra heavy duty terminal to go onto the block. Now, the other trick, if you can call it that, for making what I consider the best battery cables money can buy, is I solder these. I don't crimp them or 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 anything like that or use there's some uh, terminals out there where you 
you, you strip the end of the wire, you stuff it in, there's like a nut in the terminal that you crank down on, it like clamps the, the wire strands in there. That's great to keep in your truck, your work truck or service truck or whatever for a, a field repair. They definitely have their place. They're really useful. I've used them plenty of times, of course, we all have, but if you're making cables in the shop, soldering is the absolute way to go. It gives you 100% connection between the cable and the lug. It stiffens everything up. If you were to just crimp this, this point right here, right after the lug, the cable's liable to bend, and uh, especially if you don't heat shrink to uh, cover it, that's where water can come in and it's just, it's just not very good. But this is a very solid connection. And the last thing is heat shrink tubing. I use the stuff with adhesive in it. You can see some of it kind of leaked out there. And that totally seals everything off. So this should, this should last way longer than I ever need it to. So as far as the soldering goes, I'm using uh, rosin core solder. Rosin core is typically used for electrical work because it is non-corrosive. The flux is non-corrosive. Acid core flux is usually used for plumbing applications, I believe. This wire is a little bit thin. I would like to have some thicker stuff. And then even though the wire is flux cord, I do use some extra flux. This is a paste flux made by the Tory Crane Company. But I, you, know, I, you could use, I imagine, whatever flux you want as long as it's a not an acid flux. My heat source is going to be an oxyacetylene torch. Uh, with cable this big, I've, I tried a propane torch just like this, this little torch here. This is, not, this is not good. I actually just use this for shrinking the heat shrink tubing. This does not put out enough heat. If you're doing a smaller cable like a lawn tractor or whatever, this is perfect because it won't overheat everything. But you definitely need plenty of heat. So oxyacetylene is the way to go. I'm using a cutting tip just because that's what I have on here, but I, uh, a, a standard brazing or welding tip would also work, especially if you want to size down your flame a little bit to have better control. But I've done okay with this. I keep the flame a little bit low and keep it pulled away, and it, it solders just fine. Okay, enough talking. Let's get going. So here's the next cable end that I need to solder. I'll take the terminal, hold it up, figure out where I want to strip it back to. I strip a little more insulation off than what's going to go in here, just so I have space to stuff my, my solder into. So I'm going to go to about there where my thumb is. Get out the old trusty Benchmade knife. Just drag it around. With a thinner wire, of course, you want to be careful not to cut any conductors any conductor wires, but this is uh, this seems pretty to be pretty robust stuff. If you cut through, work that piece off, and there you go. Now I'm going to preload with just a little bit of flux into the ring terminal and clamp this in the vise. Now I'm also going to smear a little bit of flux onto the wire itself. This syringe really makes it easy to apply the flux better than a brush or anything. Now I'm going to gently funnel the wire in there. Make sure you don't get any strands snagged up. There we go. Then block up the wire. Now just as I have it Laying on the bench, it can kind of flop to one, one way or the other, so play around with, a little bit, with it a little bit and see what works best to hold the wire in the most uh, convenient straight position. You don't want the wire coming off at an angle, unless you want it to, depending on where the cable's going. But I'm not going to hold it close if, as if I was uh, welding or cutting. I'm going to hold it fairly far away so I don't put too much heat in. And I try to aim kind of down low like this so I don't cook the insulation. You'll hear the, the flux sizzle and kind of burn away a little bit. And then once it stops sizzling, it's probably time to start feeding it some solder. There we go. 
so I pulled the flame away and I'm just feeding it in because there's a lot of residual heat. And unwrap some more solder. Now it's getting a little cold, so I'll put some more heat into it. Just enough heat to make it go. This is oddly satisfying. Now this is just like a brake line. This is a bad time to remember that you forgot to slide the shrink tube on. God damn it, and I forgot the shrink tube. There we go, so we see some solder up top there. So it's all filled up. So sit this, let this sit, don't mess with it. When it cools off, we'll clean it up and uh, shrink to a bit. Okay, now for cleaning, all I do is I just use some carburetor cleaner, one of these little uh, metal bristle toothbrushes. Make sure to get in there. This one actually is pretty clean, I don't know why. Maybe a lot of the flux just boiled off or burned off or something. Anyway, get in there. Clean everything up. All right, well, luckily this shrink tube slid over the end. Again, this has the adhesive in it. So I'll just kind of gently touch the middle of it and move it forward until I feel that uh, that joint right after the right after the uh, lug terminal. So I know it's covering that adequately. And I'm just going to use, of course you can use a heat gun or whatever, but a uh, propane torch works fine as long as you keep a nice gentle flame. Just keep the flame moving. Of course you know how shrink tube works. Make sure to hit all the sides. I like to keep going until I see the the uh, adhesive kind of squish and squirt out the the end of the shrink tube. And there you have it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you can make, in my opinion, the best battery cables out there. Nice and heavy duty. This is nice and flexible. It's not stiff like typical battery cable. It's nice and flexible, easy to work with. You get yourself some really high quality terminals, a good shrink tube, and this will last quite some time. So thanks for watching everybody. Make sure to Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with all the projects and how to's and everything else we got going on here in the shop. Thanks for watching and come on back for more.